Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, Expanding the JIRA Toolbox, with our very special guest hosts from Arizona State University. Well, with that, let's get started. My name is Ole Kristiansdottir, and I'm the Marketing Director here at Tempo, and I'm very pleased to welcome to this webinar our guests from Arizona State University. And we'll start with a short introduction. Daniel, would you mind going first, then followed by John and Edwin? Not at all. Thank you, Olaf. So, um, yes, my name is Daniel Scott. I'm the Product Marketing Director here at Tempo. I've uh, been with the company for uh, about six months now. Um, very excited to be part of this webinar. Super excited to have one of our primary customers, ASU, uh, one of America's preeminent universities. Um, they have a great story, so uh, looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, so, yeah, excited to be here. And John? So I'm a system analyst principal at ASU, we, which we are, and I've been there since 1997, so a long time. Um, I've seen lots of changes, and uh, I'm very proud of where ASU has moved, and I'm very excited to share um, our experience with you. Great. And Edwin? Um, I am the other systems analyst, and I'm the other co-admin with John. I like to joke around that he's Doc, and I'm Marty. Um, together, we run the Atlassian instance, and I've been at ASU since 2016, but I've been, I was here since 2010, so forever a Sun Devil. Really excited to be here and show you what we got cooking with Tempo. Great. Thank you so much for being with us here today. We'll go ahead and uh, stop our video, our cameras now, so people can focus on the content, but thank you again. And I'll take a quick look at the agenda. We'll start with a short introduction about Tempo before we hand it over to John and Edwin, who will be demonstrating how they use Tempo within the organization. And finally, we will launch our poll before we round up the session with a Q&A at the end. And with that, I will hand it over to Daniel. Take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Olaf. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give everybody a, just a very brief introduction to Tempo for those that aren't familiar before um, handing proceedings over to ASU with, um, with some of the really exciting developments that they want to share. Um, so for those that maybe don't know us that well, we're really the, the market leader in time tracking solutions and our suite of products includes Tempo Timesheets, which you'll see today, Tempo Planner, Cost Tracker for Tempo Timesheets, and also Tempo Budgets. You know, we've been around since about 2007, and some of you may already know Tempo quite well and have already experienced how our tools can give you and your teams what you need to efficiently manage your time, your tasks, and your projects. Um, others may be new to Tempo, perhaps, and are looking for guidance on how to, say, integrate Tempo reports into your invoicing process. But as I mentioned, our, our main focus today is on the work that ASU has done and is continuing to do to integrate a, a customized solution into their wider processes. And I'm very excited to hear and see what they have been able to achieve. But first, I just wanted to highlight a few of the, the, you know, the 20,000 plus customers who currently benefit from using Tempo. We have customers who range from small consultant agencies to really dozens of the world's most prestigious brands. And we're honored to have one, of, one such brand, ASU, on the call today. And as more and more companies rely on software development as a key factor in their strategy and success, it becomes increasingly important to log and track time spent on a variety of different projects and initiatives. And whether you're big or small, or if you're invoicing your customers, for example, you don't need me to tell you uh, that tracking time accurately is, is really essential. And when it comes to our ecosystem, companies like ASU typically don't just rely on a single standard app to build out core functionality. You know, most software companies like Tempo, we spent years designing and developing software to meet specific use cases for our customers who can then mix and match best of breed applications to suit their business priorities. And what's more, customers are, are also able to kind of course correct, changing their application set and integrations to address shifting priorities to perhaps address competitive issues, add new functionality, incorporate new processes, and so on. And from a deployment perspective, you know, our cloud apps can really be implemented and integrated extremely quickly with minimal disruption and often in a, in a self-service model. And finally, from, from our perspective, we invest thousands of man hours every year to ensure our products and services are as good as they can be, sharing best practice with our customers and providing responsive support. So with that, I'll hand proceedings over to John at ASU. Uh, take it away, John. So welcome. I'm hoping everybody can see my screen now. Um, so uh, welcome again to uh, ASU uh, and how we uh, use Tempo uh, along with Atlassian and, and Jira uh, tools sets. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say, just a little bit about ASU is that we are very big. <laughs> We're one of the largest universities in the United States. 
And as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of enrolled enrollees and lots of alumni. Uh, it's uh, probably almost over 16,000 faculty and staff. It's a very big place. Um, in Tempe here where the, the headquarters is, is, is kind of like a, a town of itself, town of its own. One of the things that I'm very proud of is that uh, we have been, our current um, administration has been transforming ASU into uh, a model for what we're calling the New American University, which is measured not by whom it excludes, but by whom it includes and how they succeed. That's part of our charter, and I feel very excited and proud to be part of that. Um, Edwin? As uh, one of those uh, ASU alumni, John mentioned, and uh, Sun Devil Forever, I couldn't be more proud of our work and contributions to ASU's overall goals. Uh, we are definitely one of the fastest growing research enterprises in the United States with $641 million total research uh, expenditures. Um, ASU is also responsible for a $4.3 billion annual imp uh, economic impact uh, to our community. And um, four years ago, ASU was using JIRA, but with little to no governance or any dedicated internal support. Since then, we have completely turned our ecosystem around from the wild, wild west that it once was before to the enterprise um, project management work tracking tool, the premier uh, work tracking tool that the institution offers. And Tempo has been extremely instrumental in that success. So uh, Edwin and I both worked for the University Technology Office, which is ASU's central IT department. <clears throat> we serve um, technology support, uh, technology specialists all across ASU. Um, starting with the UTO, we've got 585 uh, full-time staff, a bunch of student workers, and there's another 877 distributed uh, non-UTO technologists across the university. So again, this because it's a big a big city uh, or a small city anyway. Uh, ASU is uh, we have a lot of IT support. Where our work is broadly grouped into three different categories: projects, which are high profile, high project, high priority, and high impact projects, which have a definite beginning and end. And then we have also products and services, uh, which are support for and maintenance of university wide products including the university websites and student facing pages and the other tool suites like Microsoft, Zoom, Slack, and our Atlassian and Tempo tools. In, December, in 2016, um, we decided to look at the tools we were using and wh whether they were still meeting our needs. We had, at the time we were using PlanView and it was a much more than we needed. Um, so we reviewed seven different products um, at the end of that, we, just, we saw that JIRA and Confluence included most of the co collaboration tools we needed, but it didn't include the time management stuff that we needed. Um, but when we added Tempo into that mix, everything that we needed was available with that suite. So we were very excited to be able to do that. When we were, think when we were getting ready to deploy this, uh, it's important to the general principle uh, about how to design our systems was designed for reporting. We need to make sure that we um, collect the information that the people who want that it, want that will get, will need, no more and no less. But we also, and that's, that's a principle that's very broadly understood, but we also wanted to make sure that we tried to future-proof our designs. And one of the things we did for that was we created very clear naming schemes for, um, for all the different elements in JIRA and, and Tempo. Uh, which you'll see as we go through this. <clears throat> uh, so what kinds of work are we doing? Back in 2016, we were doing project work and maintenance of business. Project work, as I mentioned, has a definite beginning and end, and maintenance of business is keeping the lights on, um, and that, those, that work never ends. Uh, we also have, um, at this point, we have 64 different uh, service partnerships, which are service partnership agreements, which are um, departments that we have made um, agreements with are not, not almost contract, but not quite to support them in various ways. We have desk side support, we've got uh, developing their websites for them, um, keeping their infrastructure going, whatever. Um, and so we've got um, 64 of those relationships. That's another kind of work that we do. Now, 
Tempo has offered us the flexibility to change our reporting needs based on the organization's needs. And over the last uh, four to five years, our organization has changed, uh, has continued to evolve and adapt to the ever constant changing world of technology. For version one, we were focused on effort by org and unit, which we expected to lead to good capacity estimates. We encouraged Tempo uh, plans, but focused primarily on Tempo time tracking, so logging work against actual JIRA tickets. Since then, we have pivoted our attention to planning it to planning in order to paint a better picture of resource utilization here at the UTO. These days, because our users are either aligned to a project, product, or service of some kind, Tempo reports can quickly generate insight for someone as high up as the CIO or your everyday standard user. So this table that uh, you see here shows how we are how we were grouping reports in Tempo and Jira during what we call version one. Uh, at the UTO, we have several different reporting needs that Tempo assists us with tremendously. And because Jira is not natively a reporting tool, Tempo has allowed us a greater range of creativity when building our Jira schemes and templates. We're allowed to think outside the box thanks to features like Tempo Teams and Tempo Accounts. And uh, without Tempo, we would not be able to aggregate our data within the Atlassian tool suite, and we'd have to rely heavily on API development for our reporting needs. So when we started this migration, uh, first we designed and then we deployed all this stuff. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of things we, we did uh, in eight months. Uh, we had to, basically we had eight months because at the end of that eight months, we were, our contract with PlanView was over. And so we had to um, uh, make, take everything that was in flight in our previous project management system and make it work in the new one. So we created four different uh, unique sets of configurations, which we call packages. Um, and we, you know, while we were doing this, we restarted from scratch again several times because, you know, we came up with some roadblocks or we found things that weren't going to work. And we said, okay, well, that didn't work. So let's try another design. But we got it done. And we got a whole lot of in-flight projects done. We created a lot of uh, confluence spaces. We onboarded a whole, whole bunch of new users. We created documentation and it worked. Uh, we got it all done and we were, were very excited about it. Very proud of our, of our work too. This is a picture of where we are right now. As you can see on the left-hand side, we've got a lot of different elements um, that some of which were left over. When we were doing our initial rollout, we were ignoring everything that was already in there. As we said, the site that we were we were moving into for our, with our PM work was already being used by our uh, by a lot of ASU developers, but and they had not had any governance essentially. Uh, and if somebody wanted to create a new status, they did. If they wanted to create a project, the people the admins just created it for them. There was no um, organization or um, or standardization. Uh, we ignored all that when we were creating our, our stuff because we didn't have time to think about all the um, chaos that was there before, the wild, wild west that Edwin mentioned. So one example uh, is that there are still 332 different statuses. Um, there was one, uh, there's a done status, which of course makes sense. There was also a done, done status, like this is really done. <laughs> Uh, and and we've since deleted that one, thank God. But um, but we have a lot more work to do. So cleanup is going to be one of our big big chores moving forward. On the right hand side, you can see that uh, we've got about 1,900 users at this point. Um, when we first started, uh, AS the UTO was the larger uh, proportion of those of those. But we've our success has been Edwin's and my success has been to make it a product that can be used across across the university. And so now there are more uh, users outside of the UTO um, than there are inside. Now, change is constant in the world of technology, and that is especially true at the most innovative university in the US. So we find ourselves constantly adapting to new business needs pretty often. Um, in 2017, when we first started, we had one to two official packages or templates. And since then, our user adoption, like John mentioned, has increased significantly. And more and more groups are adopting our template package methodology to get the most out of the tool suite. 
and an integral part of our template has always been the marriage between JIRA and Tempo. Uh, our official projects, which we started off with, haven't really changed much. They still have a defined beginning and ending, and projects often become products or services when they're complete. Now, products are for maintenance and updating our supported products that we develop for in-house. Services are similar to products, but designed to manage products we don't develop for often, like SaaS tools, uh, for example, Atlassian, Tempo, Zoom, Slack, et cetera. And we have portfolios now, which aggregate projects, products, and services around business needs. These days in version four, uh, which is what we're calling our current setup, Jira projects at the UTO should either belong to a, a project, a product, or a service, or some umbrella aggregate like a portfolio. portfolio. Because our organization has standardized these templates, our data can now roll all the way up to leadership in a very simplified manner, regardless of the type of work being done. Whether you're in a project, product, or service, the data should roll up the same way. So this table shows uh, how we are grouping reports in Tempo and Jira today, so version four. Uh, in our current organizational setup, we are focused a lot more heavily on Tempo teams based on projects, products, and even service teams. So we can get, our, so we can get a better understanding of our capacity as a whole at the organization. All right, now we're gonna do some demos. I'm gonna stop sharing that and I'm going to start sharing this. All right, so I'm hoping you can all see a Google, uh, a, a Chrome page with, uh, with Tempo accounts. So what we're going to look at right now is how we create and uh, integrate our Tempo accounts into um, our projects. So the accounts, we use the accounts to aggregate time logs and plans for reporting. Um, we have... Uh, we have our, so again, this is an example of our naming scheme. So all the, pro, all the official projects start with a PRJ, products are, start with UPRD, and we've got um, services down here. I saw one not too long ago, uh, USBC, that's a service. And we've got, this one here is a, a, like a PRJ, but for one of those 64 service partnerships. So it's a SPP project. We've got a, a bunch of other, other kinds of, of naming conventions. And each one of these projects gets its own single um, account so that we can roll up so that we can collect all the data we need, the tempo data we need from um, any, any project's work uh, where they do all the time logs. What, what I've done here for this demo is we've created a project for a demo, demo project. And we're going to add, um, this is the demo project right here, PRJ Tempo Demo Project. And when you go into the um, uh, project, here's the project. And then when you go into the project settings, this is the detail page. And right now it's not connected to any Tempo accounts, but it's very easy to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create the account. And here is the, here's the account uh, page right here. We're gonna go in here and just create it. And when we are creating, when we create these, uh, we have, there are broad categories of things, and one of them is a um, is the name of the of the package, and so in this case it's a PRJ package. So the name has to be the same. Uh, with our naming scheme is that the has, name has to be the same on the project, on the Tempo account, and on the um, and several other other places, uh, including the teams. And we'll, Edwin will show you that in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name from the project into here. And I'm gonna copy the key because we use, because some of this, some of our work is done from, uh, some of our reporting is done through API calls and um, the data, the, our data, um, uh, our re data reporting people need to have everything, they need to know exactly what they're looking for. So they all have to be, they all have to correspond. And I'll make myself the lead on this because I'm the project lead down here. So John Wilson and go down here and find myself. There it is. And the category has to match. So if we look over here in category, I've stuck this into the cloud category, the program cloud category. 
I'll do the same thing over here. Oops, there it was. <clears throat> and we're not using customer. Um, we have, and I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, we need to have our customers, the, cust the, the tempo account customer field is, uh, works very well if you have, I uh, need to have multiple accounts under a one under a single customer. We need that, but we also need the other way around where we can have multiple uh, customer accounts, customers for any one single account. And that, so we can't, we couldn't use that. So we don't use that field. We use a different field, which I'll show you in a later demo. So I'm gonna create the account. And then uh, over here in the project, okay, so you can, when I, if I go and find that project, <coughs> that uh, account, here it is. And I could go in here and I could link it to a project here, but we also want it to be the default. And the best way, the only way you can do that is to go into the project itself. So I'm gonna go down over here to, um, in, the, in the project settings, I'm gonna to go to accounts. And here is that page. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna search, whoops, I need to go in and refresh this. So we have the right one. And I have to go and look for a demo. There it is. And I'm gonna link it. And then I will set it as the default so that all new tickets that get created in this project will ha automatically have this account associated with them. And that will also associate every single um, time log or time plan with that account. All right. So that's how hard it is to connect, to create and connect an account with um, for a, for a particular project when we create a new one. Uh, we have a lot of other steps for actually creating the project, but this is the, the tempo part for accounts is pretty simple. So when we, um, I mentioned that we have other uh, older stuff and some other ways that we organize stuff, so the projects, services, and products all have one account per project, per JIRA project. Uh, the, the name project, it gets to be very confusing since um, Jira means, it means one thing in Jira and it means another thing for project managers. Um, so this is an example of one of our um, service partnership mobs. Uh, it has five different kinds of work. Each one of those has an, has an account. Again, this is the same page as we were looking at right here for this, for the uh, project that we created. But this is this, this, that page has, this particular project has five different accounts associated with it. None of them are the default because that way, when somebody creates a new ticket in, in this project, in the SPM project, um, they can assign one or the other of these um, accounts to it. Um, we have some of the older projects that were, that were in, in effect before we were even start, we, before Edwin and I got involved um, and they were, um, much more complicated. So they had um, lots of projects all associated into one JIRA project, lots of official projects. So here's an example of that. This is the uh, PeopleSoft technical project, and it has lots of accounts associated with it because any one ticket could, have, could be associated with any one of these, um, one of these accounts. Okay, Edwin, it's your turn. Uh, pick it up from where John left off. Hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, this kind of the second portion uh, that we do, not only do we do that we give uh, tempo accounts to each project, but we also provide a tempo team. And thanks to our naming conventions, it's really easy for our team to determine the type of team that JIRA project needs. So in this example, piggybacking off of John's uh, demo project, I'm going to create a team based off of this particular project. So what I go in here and do in Tempo is I'll create the team first. I'll set myself as a lead this time. And for program, uh, which is just how we categorize and organize our teams in Tempo, I'm gonna go ahead and select projects. That way, whenever we, or a portfolio director who has access to all these teams needs to quickly organize the teams, they can go into program, they can go into projects, It'll pull up every single project level team and they can go ahead and find their new team that they just created or that we created for them. So once on the, on the project team, what we go ahead and do is we add the members. So for this example, I'll just go ahead and add myself. 
I'll commit myself to this team for 50% of the time. And you can add a joining and leaving date as well. Something that we do as well is we differentiate between the two types of users that we have in our Atlassian instance. We have UTL members and we have non-UTL members. By default, it's set to UTL member as I am part of the UTL. I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit save. And I'm gonna go ahead and add John as well. And something else that we do just to make planning easier is add a project link here. So if I were to link the project to the team, it makes planning easier uh, because the planner will then recognize that this team is linked to this project and it'll pre-populate all the tickets that are within that project on the planner screen. And I'll show you that in just a second. So I'll go ahead and link the demo project. Now that the team is ready, now that the project is linked, I can go into the planner, which is here, and I can plan for the team work on that particular project. So if I go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pull in the ticket from that project team, drag it over to myself. And then, I'm sorry, and adjust accordingly for the week. So it automatically, the team, the, the team planner automatically takes into account that I only have 50% of this week's availability for that team. So it cuts my 40 hour work week to 20%, I mean, sorry, to 50%, which is 20 hours for that week. Now, before I forget, uh, something that we've been doing in version four is adding teams to one of our Tampa global permission roles in order to give portfolio uh, directors access to every team. This group is comprised of just our portfolio directors. And each time that we add a new team to that list, it grants them the ability to manage and view that team. We do this so the portfolio directors have the ability to report off any teams that they like. So what I have here is the new permission roles global uh, settings. I'm going to go ahead and click the teams. So, so these are the teams that are part of this list already. And if I scroll down, these are the teams that are not part of that list. So if I wanna add my new demo team to that list, I go ahead and select it, it gets added to the list. And now the list of 10 or 12 uh, portfolio directors that we have here should have the ability to view and report off of that team as necessary. So now that I've added that team to the permission roles, it allows for our portfolio directors to run aggregate plan time reports for the quarter. So this is actually a demo of a true real report that our portfolio directors would be running every quarter to see where we are as far as plan time for that quarter goes. It's super simple, again, because they have the right permissions in tempo and on JIRA side, which John will cover shortly, they should be able to go in here, click on planned, now our portfolio directors only care about who's in the UTO. So they'll quickly add the UTO member as the role and hit create. And once they do that, they get a report like this. This particular report shows you all key or all UTO members, which projects they're working on and how much plan time is against that project for the quarter. Now, um, as you can see, uh, our teams here at the UTR are spread across several different projects. They can be working on a project, they can be working on products. Sometimes they work on legacy type projects, which as you see here. Um, but this is the particular report that allows our portfolio directors uh, to forecast any future work uh, and plan uh, ahead for any upcoming projects or big, big initiatives that the university is working on. And uh, John now will demonstrate how to, an example of a log time report and how that looks on a user level. All right, so I'm gonna do grab the sharing again. And so we, uh, so um, Tempo's, no, uh, Edwin's um, demo was a, for a planned time report and I'm gonna look at a log time report. 
Um, I've mentioned several times our service partnership agreements, and we have um, one of our staff members is uh, tasked with doing quarterly budgets, um, quarterly billing to see how much they, um, how much work we did for them so that we can charge the department um, uh, for the work we did. Um, so what she has to do first is she has to go and validate um, that the people who do the work actually have been logging time. So we've got a report here. Um, this one here is SPA time validation, which looks like this, which uh, pulls in all the people who might be doing work for that for those uh, for those groups. Um, and here's what this looks like. So the fil you just filter by the number of people. Look here. Here are the users that they that she's filtering on. Um, <clears throat> and then she looks at the user. Uh, just she just needs to group it by user. Uh, but then she goes down here and looks. So again, this is from January 1st to March 31st. She goes down here and looks to see whether the amount of time looks reasonable for that they logged. So this is all the time that they logged anywhere because she has access to that. And I'll mention to you how we look, how we look for that in a minute. Uh, but look here, Garrett Miller only logged 75 hours uh, for those three months. That doesn't look, compared to the others, that doesn't look reasonable. So she'll probably send him an email saying, can you go back and please log time as necessary for the different uh, service partnerships that you um, worked for? So for this to work, she needs to have access to be able to see all those things. So in our demo demo project um, that, that we've just created with the, with the new account and the new team, um, she needs to be able to see all the time that's logged to those and so we have to go in and we've created a special group, a JIRA group called supervisors, UTO supervisors. And that particular group has permission to see the time logs in that, pro in that project. And I'll show you that here. So this is the permission scheme. So we're back now to the demo projects settings down here where their permissions are. You can see in, there's a lot of them, a lot of permissions. Um, and one of them is Tempo View All Work Logs. Um, so, they had, so anybody in the administrator's role in this project can see it and uh, some other things. But the one that I'm gonna point out here is the UTO Supervisors. We've created this UTO Supervisors JIRA group to include anybody who needs to see time across lots of different projects. So anybody who's in the UTO Supervisors group which Jerry, which Gene is, um, can view all work logs in this particular project. This particular project scheme, uh, permission scheme, it follows our naming convention. So we've got the PRJ, we've got, this is open tickets, the open projects, not closed ones, uh, and PS stands for permission scheme. So it's a nice compact way of describing what this permission scheme applies to. This particular permission scheme applies to hundreds of projects because we've created lots and lots of PRJ projects. And when we create it, we're copying the template that Edwin, Edwin and I have been alluding to, uh, which is part of our PRJ package. And every single, a lot of the um, schemes, the, the JIRA schemes get applied automatically when we copy it. So this is one of them, the permission scheme. And it has, so all of those projects that are by default um, have this particular setting, UTO supervisors being able to see work logs, all of those are automatically set. So we don't have to go in and set each one of those in, in each project. The same thing is true for our service projects and our product projects. So that all of our supervisors can see across all this stuff very easily. Um, so the first report that I showed you was for validation to make sure that they've been doing their, their work correctly uh, or they've been logging their time correctly. The second report uh, is, the, is based on a filter. So the first one was based on a uh, set of people and, and the time timeframe. Uh, the second report is based on a filter because we need to know um, for each, she, she needs to know for each customer how much time has been um, logged to those logged to their uh, pro, um, their projects. So we use that special customer field UTO customer number 
um, which is actually not just a number. It's a, um, it's a whole bunch of, it has a whole description in it. But so in this particular case, I'm going to be looking at the uh, education outreach and student services customer. Um, so she wants to know all the people, all the time that's been logged, uh, all the tickets that have, that have been associated with this customer number. So there's lots and lots of them, but in any particular quarter, not so, not as many. So then she creates this report. Then she creates this report, or actually she could save it. Um, I don't know if you noticed in earlier here. We can have saved reports. So this is the one I'm looking at right now. Is this last one? <clears throat> so in the saved report that that she's got set up there, she sets the time in it, but it already pulls in all this stuff that we filtered, but just for this quarter. So instead of thousands, we've now got a much smaller number of tickets available that that um, that is pulling in. And she organizes it by user and issue. And so she can see where people have been logging time. And at the end of the quarter, she can say, oh, these people worked 230, 233 essentially hours for this particular customer, um, which allows her to send them, send them a bill. So she exports this to Excel um, <clears throat> and does her magic outside of, outside of Jira and Tempo. And that's it for our demonstrations. So now we're back to uh, Tempo and any questions. Perfect. Thank you so much, John and Edwin. Um, and thank you to the audience. Um, we would want to launch our poll. And this time we have a special request. This is before we go into questions. We want to take this opportunity to invite members of the audience here today to share their story of how they are using Tempo. And we want to share it on our blog. We do really love showcasing our great customers on the Temple blog. And if you think this is a great opportunity for you, we would be happy to organize something with you. Um, but I think with that, we can move into the questions. So let me see what we have here. All right. Um, so John, this is actually maybe a, a good, good question. How do people log their time? Do you yourself have a favorite way of logging time? And uh, do you, how do you prevent people from logging time to, for example, a, a project or a customer that has been closed? Okay, I can, I can, I'll share my screen and show you. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. <laughs> okay. So uh, there are many different ways of logging time, of course. Um, I, by the way, I have a lot of bookmarks. So uh, different people have different ways of navigating through all this stuff, but I've got a lot of Atlassian related and, and tempo related bookmarks. So um, first way, the one thing I do is I go to tempo my work. <clears throat> and I can then say, for example, that um, today, which is Thursday, I have done a lot of work for this. Um, let me see if I can find that. That ticket easily. It's uh, I did some work on this yesterday. So, twenty seven ninety six. So if I just do a search here, so there's there's a this is this is very Tempo has been working on this for a long time, and they've made it easier and easier to log time. So when you first go into My Work, you get um, this search sort of search panel. You've got issues you can look. You can recent issues, assigned issues, favorite issues, or you can also set up your own little. Um, your own little filters, which find different things. So in this particular case, I'll just stay with the recent and I will look for 2796, find 2796, and it will find that. And it takes a little while to actually find it, but I happen to know that if I scroll down here, it'll show that to me and I'll just drag it over here. Whoops, drag it over here. And then I'll put in the amount of time I worked. Let's say it was a 1.5 hours, automatically switches that and I can click on log time. Poof, I've logged the time. Now there are, there are many other ways to log time. Another thing you can do is you can go into a particular project. And so if I go back to, um, uh, and you can actually go into the ticket and log time. So if I go and look at, <clears throat> Uh, particular board that I'm a, a project that I'm associated with, and I scroll down here to this particular ticket that we've just talked about. 
I can uh, either open it right like this and go in here and click on the tempo icon. There's a number of different ways of getting there. I could also go over and open a temp tempo over there. <clears throat> I've logged a bunch of times, so it takes a minute or two to pull this all pull this all in. And then I can just click on log time. And again, it pops up a little thing here. Um, again, the same ticket. I can just say that I worked another three quarters of an hour. Poof, I've logged time that way. Um, so you wanted to know how we keep people from logging time to, um, to issues that, that, to projects that are closed. Yep. So we have a um, closed project permission scheme. So <clears throat> um, actually, let's not look at it there. I'll just show you what the permission scheme looks like. Um, again, notice how I'm relying on my bookmarks. It works really well. Permission schemes. And then we're going to go down and look for the UTO closed permission scheme. That's open. That's open. It's closed. Okay. So we'll look at the permissions here. This is a close when when a when a when we close one of our UTO projects, um, we move it. We change the permission scheme to this. Again, we had earlier. I showed you the one that was open. This is closed. Um, if you go down here and look at um, log logging time, <clears throat> um, nobody can do it essentially. <laughs> um, so we basically blocked out any uh, any time that you could log any way that you could log time. So you can't log time to a closed project. So that's one way we do that. There is another way of doing that, which is based on the workflows, uh, workflow settings, but we, uh, that's, that's probably more detail than we need to get into right now. Yeah, great, okay, thank back you. Okay, back to you. All right, awesome, thank you. So uh, there's another question here about uh, planned versus actual. Is that a report that you utilize at all or how do you report on that? Maybe that's something that you're currently working on preparing. I'll take Edwin? that one. Um, that is a, a, a great question. So we do use plan versus actuals here and there. Typically it's on the portfolio director level because they look at the plans and then they look at the time that's actually been logged. Because this year or this version, we're pivoting more towards plan time. Our focus has not been logging time anymore. So some of that logging time data isn't there or isn't what we need it to be yet, just yet. But as we continue to improve on the planning side of things, slowly but surely the, the time tracking should come in and then we will be able to see between the plan time, the log time, and then adjust accordingly uh, as we move forward through the next quarter or the quarter after that for when the portfolio directors are planning for resources and uh, allocation. Great, thank you. Um, there's a question here about demonstrating how hours are logged and modified and how estimates are input into Tempo and I think that was displayed uh, when John was showing the work log window uh, in my work. And I do want to add, like uh, John alluded to this, there are multiple ways to track time. My favorite is using the Google Calendar integration. Uh, a lot of developers like to use the tracker that is available on the JIRA issue. Uh, and we are working on more and more and easier ways to track and log time. One of them being a VS Code integration that many developers might be interested in. Uh, where it automatically tracks. Uh, we also have a, a JIRA integration where it gives you suggestions like, hey, you were working on this uh, JIRA issue yesterday. Do you want to log time against that? Um, we do have a video available that shows all the top 10 ways to log time. So we might actually share that with everyone afterwards so you can take a look for yourself. But that was a great question. Um, there's a roadmap related question. Daniel, do you want to comment on that one? Uh, so people want to know, uh, are scheduled reporting a part of the Tempo Roadmap? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'll have to get, Sonny, I'll have to get back to you with some details on that. I know the product management team are working on some scheduled reporting. Um, I wouldn't want to speak incorrectly. So um, I'll take, I've taken note of your question uh, and I'll get back to you directly on that. If related to that, we do have an idea portal online 
that people can reach from our website. Um, that's a great place to see what has been uh, suggested by our customers. You can vote on it. You can add your own idea. But I do encourage people to take a look there as well. It's a great way to interact with our product management team as well. Yeah, All that's right. a great, great suggestion. Thank you, Olaf. Yeah. And for Edwin or John, is it possible to show all issues in reports? Uh, is this something that you utilize in your reporting? I think that because the reports are based on time logs, they, it is not possible to show tickets that do not, do not have any time logs. Um, so basically what we're pulling in is we're pulling in time log information into the, into the reports. So if there was no time log, then it wouldn't show. You'd have to um, merge that with uh, with a different with a different um, export maybe into Excel or something. That's what, how I would do it. Great, thank you, uh, Edwin. I think this one might be for you. Are you currently using Temple Planner for scheduling people's time, and if so, how? Um, yes. So over the last four years, I have become the Temple Planner expert here at ASU. Um, believe it or not. And uh, we've done it a bunch of several ways. So we do it when we first started, we were planning daily, you know, after that we were planning weekly. And now it seems like we might be planning quarterly. Um, the really cool thing about Tempo Planner is just like time log, you can kind of log wherever. There's a lot of different ways to plan these days. And um, one of the ways that we like to do it here is uh, planning by, uh, you know, we alluded that we work out of product, projects or services. So we tend to plan off of those products, projects or services. So for instance, I am dedicated to Atlassian support. So I get planned weekly to work roughly 38 hours on Atlassian support. And I set that plan to repeat. And because that's the primary function of my job, that repeated plan can extend for a whole year or even two years. Um, so we tend, there's a lot of set and forget for our teams, which has been really great. Um, and then when you run the plan versus actuals, you, my director will be able to see, okay, well, it looks like Edwin's actually spending 30, 30 hours on Atlassian instead of the 38 that we planned for him. Let's see if we can move them to a different tool or use those 10 extra hours for something else. So <clears throat> uh, to answer your question, we do use planner. We do schedule people uh, or we plan people. We are trying to plan people ahead of time. Right now, the, the goal is to plan at a quarterly um, effort, um, but the jury's still out on that one. We're still trying to work our way through see, to see how that's gonna work with our, in, our tool and our resources and our, and our portfolio directors. I've got another point about that. Um, Go ahead. When we do our planning, we often use what we might call a bucket ticket. So, uh, so at, at the project level, we would log time, we would plan time against one ticket. So we, So basically you'd say, for, for this project, I'm going to plan 30 or like for Ed, what Edwin just said, he plans 38 hours. Uh, and so he would be planning that probably against one or two tickets, what we would, we would call bucket tickets. And, but he wouldn't log time to those. He would log time to the individual tasks. So that's, uh, that's something that we've take, we've, uh, we use a lot. Great. Thank you. And yes, Edwin, thank you. You actually answered two questions at once, which was perfect. Uh, maybe before we close this session, because we're uh, closing in on the top of the hour, we might have time for one more question if somebody wants to add a question. But maybe, uh, John, if you would like to start, for someone who is new to Temple, what would you recommend uh, they start with? Where should people start? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, are, are we talking about the for an admin or are we talking about a, um, a user? Uh, those, are, those are very different questions. Oh yeah, uh, the admin, please. <laughs> okay, um, so it's really important. Again, as I as I mentioned in the presentation, it's really important to only um, start tracking things that you people will need. Um, so the first thing I think that you need to do is you need to talk to your uh, the people who will be pulling information out or who will you will be reporting to to find out what kind of information they want. And so we structured our account. We, we've structured the way we um, build our accounts and the way we build our teams around who is going to be asking us uh, for information and who's going to want to be creating their own reports. So that um, so that's that's I think that's the key thing is talk to who who's going to want your information and how will they want to pull it out. Um, so that's the first thing I would think about. That's great advice. 
Okay. Um, but Edwin, for you, um, what is your temp favorite tempo feature? Honestly, my new, okay, I have two. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna cheat, I have two. I have <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite way to log time is timesheets because of the nature of my work and it tends to be mostly support and admin related duties. Because I use timesheets, I'm able to log work probably a lot faster than, than I would be able to if I went in the ticket in, into each individual ticket and try to log my time. Because timesheet sets up a grid where I'm able to see all the tickets that I've logged time against and I can quickly log time against those same tickets over and over and over again. And my second favorite feature lately has been the new resource planning screen. We've had the pleasure of working with some great, amazing people at Tempo, um, uh, Kim being one of them. And she's helped us out tremendously and heard a lot of our feedback and ideas. And we've been able to help with the resource planning screen. And now it's, uh, you know, it's, it's more than I could have asked for uh, as far as planning goes and, and pulling in resources and seeing kind of a quick snapshot of where we are for the week. Well, that's great to hear. And um, it's almost at the top of the hour. Uh, I want to say thank you to our wonderful guests, John and Edwin. Thank you so much for being with us here today and sharing your story. I want to say thank you to everyone in the audience for joining. I'm going to close the session now. So everyone stay safe. And John and Edwin, I hope to work with you again. Thank you.